Right now, you should be seeing headlines across all media saying that this is the last chance to buy. You'll see some of my own videos suggesting that this is the last time that you could actually go in, purchase assets and purchase property. If you go across any Facebook group, they're all saying just buy anything. In this video, I wanna discuss what that actually looks like, why you might still have time and why you might just be getting fooled. If you're interested in what my thoughts are, then definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now, if you have real estate experience, whether that's building your own portfolio or working in real estate, I wanna hear from you. We are growing our team, we have a new office and you're gonna absolutely love it. So if you're interested in applying and working with Search Property, then definitely go to our careers page on our website and apply there. Alternatively, send me an email and I'll be happy to help. The team has just crossed over 25 full-time employees. So it's very, very exciting and we have so much further to go. So if you're interested in joining the mayhem and the craziness that is Search Property, then definitely apply. Now the common sentiment right now is that confidence is really low, interest rates are really high, yet property prices are still going higher. Now you're starting to see journos come out and suggest that this could be your last chance at buying property. Otherwise, you'll probably rent forever. And if you're renting, you're probably poor because that's what society has told us. I advocate for something like rent vesting, which as you know, on this channel, I talk a lot about because it ultimately gives you the best of both worlds. And you should definitely consider it, especially if you're living in a really expensive city or suburb where you can't actually buy a property there. So you say, hey, at least I can rent here and I can still get my money to work for me. If you're interested in knowing how you can go in and invest, then definitely go check out this video after this one. A couple of things we really need to consider before we jump into some statistics, some real life examples with suburbs in Sydney, and I'm gonna discuss suburbs that are actually growing and some that are not. So be sure to watch all the way through. Now, the couple of things that we wanna consider is that percentage growth is not the same as dollar value growth. And I'm gonna explain that as we go through the examples. The other thing is we need to know what our risk management looks like. Yes, you could go out there and say, Ravi, I wanna buy 10 properties in the next six months, but in effect, I have no savings. And if something goes wrong, then I'm absolutely screwed. So practicing good risk management is key to building a sustainable portfolio. What you're trying to do is get as many assets as possible for as long as possible, but the truth is that most people get shaken out because they didn't have good risk management. The other thing to consider is your lending conditions. Right now, lending conditions are very different to where they were five years ago, 10 years ago, and even 20 years ago. So chances are they're gonna be significantly different in the next five, 10, and 15 years. It's often why I say roadmaps are just a guide. You can't just go, I'm gonna buy, and then continue buying and doing the same thing in 10 years time. Because the reality is things will change and you need to adapt. I've seen really successful investors that have had no plans and then I've also seen really poor investors who stuck to a plan and absolutely got decimated because they never changed and adapted. So that's why it's key that you get the right people around you and have the right strategy that can also adapt to the changes that we see in this environment. Now, when you hear people say you need to get in, prices are crazy, you can't find anything, supply is low, you just have to buy. With that comes FOMO, and then you start buying with emotions. And where you can get really screwed is when you buy with that emotion of missing out, and then matching that with the fact that you as a person wanna go and buy your own place, it is a recipe for disaster. And the reason why it's a recipe for disaster is mainly because you're buying and investing with emotions. Unfortunately, as humans, we have a lot of emotions, some more than others. When you're treating property as a business, you need to remain as logical as possible. Now, yes, some people will have more emotions and can't stay rational, but that's just the reality of it. And that's why some people will do really well compared to others who are still investing, but maybe more risk averse and that's just normal. Now let's cover off a couple of key examples with some suburbs and I want you to make the decision for yourself to go, okay, if I did go down this path right now, today, or if I'm someone who made these decisions over the last couple of years, and I know, I know there's some of you guys doing that, then the next couple of examples will be really eye-opening. Now with the majority of people watching my videos from Sydney, I'm gonna make this applicable to New South Wales and Sydney specifically. In saying that, the same could be applied to Brisbane and the same could be applied to Melbourne. No, I'm not discriminating because I think Sydney is better than one or the other. I'm just saying that given I was born in Sydney, I know this market really, really well and it's why I still do not touch it. 
Now in the first example, what I wanna do is look at an area that's in Sydney that has been primed for growth. Everyone was saying it, and in fact, it actually did grow over the last five years. But then I wanna compare it to an area that not only have you probably not heard of, but also is in a state which has been really affected by a lot of land tax issues, and the political climate there is just silly. In addition to that, we also had a lot of issues when it came to lockdowns, and yes, I'm referring to Victoria. So I've gone in and said, okay, if I had gone and simply invested in one of these areas versus something that had really positive sentiment, what would that actually look like? So let's look at the numbers. The suburb I've got here is Granville, which is a suburb near Parramatta, which has been basically tipped to be the second CBD of Sydney. If you're outside of Sydney, you're probably like, where's Parramatta? But anyone in Sydney knows that Parramatta is supposed to have been the next best thing. And that's why we've seen such good growth. So if you look at this, we're looking at houses here. The median value right now is about 1.024 million. So just over a million bucks. And you can see how it's tracked over the last couple of years. If you go all the way back to about 2018, 2019, the actual median price was sitting at 725,000. And then it sort of stagnated and went sideways until we've seen this massive boom during the lockdowns. And that's when we saw prices go from 710,000 all the way up to about a million. And since then has plateaued mainly due to the fact that interest rates are so high. If you had gone and bought exactly five years ago, you could have bought a property for about 725,000 and now it would be worth just over a million dollars. Now that would equate to about 41% growth. Now I'm gonna have these numbers on the board here so you don't have to continue remembering those numbers or jotting them down. Now Granville five years ago was tipped to be the area to be in. Now yes, there's negative sentiment. We had some issues with the demographics as well, but there was a lot of metrics to suggest that you would get a lot of growth and we've seen a lot of growth. But what I wanna do is compare that to an area you've probably not heard of in a state that's had everything against it and I wanna see how it's performed. So about five years ago, you could have invested in Wodonga, which is a major regional hub in Victoria. And what you can see here is the prices are significantly different. So for a house here, right now you could pick up one for about $549,000. But if you go back to looking at what prices were in five years ago, you would see prices at about $349,000. And this goes to my first point, which is percentage gains are not the same as dollar value gains. Because if you looked at this and said, okay, well in Granville, I've actually made almost $300 to $400,000. In Wodonga, if I had bought, I'm only really making about 200K. So clearly Granville was the better option, right? Well, not exactly. Because if you had bought in Wodonga five years ago, the growth that you would have experienced was 57% versus the 41% you would have got in Granville. And this is why percentage gains is very important to consider when you're actually going to accelerate your portfolio. Because yes, you can go out there and say, I made all this money, but it would be like buying a place in Vaucluse in Sydney for about $20 million, it going up by $1 million and saying, well, hey, I made a million dollars, what did you do? But as a percentage gain, you would still be outperforming it in some areas like this. And this is why historically, if you look at properties priced between $350,000 and $650,000, that is the sweet spot. That is where the majority of the gains can be experienced. And that is key for when you're building out a foundational portfolio. If you're someone interested in going, hey, I wanna go and build a portfolio with 10 plus properties, how am I gonna do it? Well, you want the fastest horse, right? And the fastest horse will often not be in an area that's highly priced. So that's something to consider as you go through this. Now, you could go on to argue, playing devil's advocate, that Ravi just picked these suburbs to prove his point. And the reality is I just picked two suburbs out of the blue. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat this process and I kid you not, hand on heart, I went and said, hey, these are the two areas, let me just look at the numbers there. And, and I'm sure there's a few that are gonna go and buck that trend. So far, just based on this video, it's looking like my theory is correct. Now, fortunately, I run the full service buyers agency and I've been doing it for a few years. So I know the majority, if not all of the suburbs that have been priced at this price point in the areas that we look at have outperformed even blue chip areas across Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. The next example I have is Five Dock, which is in a west of Sydney. It's probably about 15 to 20 minutes from the city and it's a really nice area to live in. There's a lot of good eateries as well. And I'm sure if you've known about Five Dock, you love the cafes and you love the vibe there. It's very close to water and again, prime real estate. If you said blue chip in Sydney, you would say Five Dock. So you look at the median price here and it's just over 2.4 million more than twice as expensive as Granville, despite being probably 25 to 30 minutes away, it is blue chip. So if you look at this and you go, okay, well it's worth about 2.4, and if I got in five years ago, it would be worth 1.7 million. 
So yes, I would have made $700,000. But what does that actually look like from a percentage perspective? That would be a growth of 42%. So if you divide that by five years, it's growing at about 8%. Now, yes, you could go on to say, well, that was due to the lockdowns. This is not reliable. Uh, trust me, I've gone and looked back 30 years ago. And so I've seen the data. I've made this video super simple for you guys. And in addition to that, you could also argue the opposite, which is, hey, it could have been actually much higher, but given that interest rates have gone up significantly, that's why it's tapered off, but it would be much higher otherwise. So you can see how there's arguments for and against. Now, what I did was I said, okay, I've looked at a regional hub in Victoria. Let me think of a regional hub in New South Wales. And you're probably thinking of the same one I am, which is Dubbo. So if you go and say, okay, I go into Dubbo, the price point there is about $560,000 there. Okay, great. And it's been pretty much stagnant for the last couple of years because again, interest rates have been high there and the yields aren't stacking up quite as well when it comes to investors. So there's not as much pressure on that market. So you look at this and you say, okay, the median price point is 560,000, but five years ago, it was about $375,000. So again, I'm making just under 200K. So this would be definitely worse, but you would be wrong. And this area has grown by 49% in the same five years. So if you listen to the people around you saying, no, you've just got to buy one really expensive property in a blue chip area in Sydney, which is probably going to be the most expensive area in all of Australia, then you would have done well, but you would have significantly been outperformed by other areas. And this is why it's so key to be looking outside of your backyard, because there are areas out there that are performing so much better than the numbers I've just shown you. And to put simply, these aren't even the areas that we've been pushing clients towards when purchasing property. So you can only imagine what the numbers look like on that end. And that's why I haven't skewed this at all. I've literally just picked random areas. Now I wanna show you one more example because you could go on to say, well, price points matter now. My thesis has changed. It's not about blue chip properties. It's about price point. Ravi, show me the price points and how they're different. Well, what I did was I said, okay, the reality is right now, if you're young and you're living in Sydney, you're probably faced with one decision. Do I buy my own property or do I go out there and with the same amount that I can afford, I go and invest somewhere else? Most likely you've been told, buy in the blue chip area, get the first homeowner grants and you'll be sweet. You'll outperform anything else and you'll make money. Well, let's look at that. Again, we go to Parramatta and we look at apartments because again, if we can only afford 600K, that's what we're buying in this market. So if you look at this and you look at the unit market, right now you could probably purchase one for about $617,000. But it doesn't take a genius to look back five years ago and it's actually gone down. So during the biggest Australian property boom that we've seen over the last 50 years, you would have purchased property and actually lost money. Think about that when you consider all the interest rate increases, all the interest you would have had to pay and you can go ahead and thank your uncle who told you this was gonna be a good idea. Now we can take this even a step further when you look at something like Rouse Hill. Now Rouse Hill has been a really popular area for a lot of immigrants coming into Australia and they've got so much infrastructure being built around there. Well, it's already been built, but the Metro was a really big factor because now you could get into like say Macquarie Park in half an hour. And if you actually went all the way to the city, it was knocking off time. So you could get to the city within an hour, but you still had enough money to buy a house. And you could have purchased a property right now, a house for $1.5 million. If you look back five years ago, it was about $1 million. So about a 50% growth rate in this area, which is awesome. So if you said, okay, so I can't afford to buy a house, but I know it's gonna go up because this area is prime for growth. I've seen everywhere people buying everything and it's going up, it's bonkers. So what I'll do is I can't buy a house, I'll buy a unit instead. That's my lower barrier to entry. I'm gonna go and do that. So in an area that houses have grown by 50%, what have the units done? If you look at this, the units can now be bought for about $640,000, but five years ago, were worth about $665,000. So you've gone ahead and lost money. Again, during one of the best times to be in Australian real estate. Now, again, this is just taking a median value of the suburb. There's gonna be some properties that have outperformed, some that have actually done well, but you can start seeing how those theories or the gut feel attempt by your uncle to convince you of certain things just doesn't quite work out. This is a numbers game and that's what it will always be. If you go ahead and understand how people buy, which is consumer behavior and human psychology, and then match that with data and research, 
you'll go out there and make money. It's just a matter of if you're actually wanting to make money or do you actually just wanna leave home and have a good excuse to do it. If you're interested in getting help to actually build this out properly, then definitely contact me and my team down below. You'll find a link to the website as well as that, a link to book in a free discovery call. It's gonna cost you nothing and you can start picking our brain as to how we can go and supercharge your portfolio. If you have enjoyed this video, definitely smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm not sure why you haven't and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.